Hello and welcome to the Lunar Gladiators channel. Uh, I am joined today by... Lily. Cynthia. Charlie. Ari. And I'm Josh. And today we're going to be talking about the works that inspired us to become enthusiasts for literature. Why so many? And mm, just going to be a uh, casual discussion that we have and uh, we should start... Uh, to the uh, far left of the table. With, uh, oh, of course, they put me on the far left. <laughs> Actually, uh -huh. my side is on the far right. Me too. And around the table. And everyone else except him. He's in the wrong spot. So, I spent a lot of time thinking about this. It was, uh, would it be Violet Le Duc, her book La Batard, which is one of my favorite books in the world. Uh, Thomas Pynchon with Gravity's Rainbow. Oh, yeah. Goodbye, Columbus. There are a lot. But I settled on a very cute story for the, for the lot of you, for our viewers here. Let's take you back to first grade. Okay. And me. Yes. All right. And I, believe it or not, growing up with my disability, benign central hypotonia, I believe I've talked about this on the show. Have I? Don't, I? Don't, I don't think you mentioned uh, that condition. All right. Well basic idea of BCH is that is a muscle tone delay. So I was late walking. I couldn't ride a two-wheel bike. I wasn't very physical, right? But left my mind intact. So what I did to compensate was I learned how to read. And what my mother kept in the bathroom was a big, and I still remember it, had a manila cover and I forgot to bring it because I am a dope, but I will bring it <laughs> next week. Remind me, Josh. Message yeah. me, all right? <laughs> and it was a complete Charles Dickens. The print was about this big, and I just fell in love with a Christmas carol. Oh, yeah. So one day, enter me in school, right? And I get asked, random call on, can I use the word light in a sentence? So me being me, I stand up, heads on the hitch, you know, <laughs> Because she thought she could call me out. And I just say, I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. Didn't say the giddy as a drunken man bit, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. wow. And she decides to say, where did you get that from? And I say, well, it's from a Christmas carol. This dope decides to call my mother Aww. and say, does it really say that? And she goes, well, you have to uh, read it to find out. Yeah. Well, it's I'm not sure. I read it a long time ago, but if she said Jim at the said so, it's probably true. She comes down, asks me, calls me from upstairs, like, uh, is there something in Dickens, light as a feather, tra la la? And little six year old me with my long curls, yes, I had curls, I should bring in a picture. Had curls? You still had curls. Ah. I know, but it was like the ringlets and they were blonde. Oh, oh I had them too. Absolutely the in thing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they are so in right now. Ladies, get your curling products. <laughs> okay, I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just make it very, very Ow! awkward. <laughs> Dude, it's the eye it didn't make it awkward hand. for me. Uh, well, unless. Was Donna the ghost? She's attempted. She just passed away. Yeah. But beauty's in the eye of the beer holder. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I don't drink beer. Already. Where was I going in the store? Oh, yes. Whiskey yes. So, I go down, I take out the book, I open it up, and I'm like, it's in stave five. Did you know stave means chapter? And my mother just looks at me. She's like, well, I probably did at one point, Jay, but thanks. And then I hear the whole story about my teacher calls the house. And she's like, ha, ah, this woman is, is loony. She couldn't just look it up. Right. Um, intimidated by a six-year-old. But reading the Christmas Carol in first grade, the original is way... That is something... I still have one of my favorite quotes, I'm not, even, I'm not even Christian. I really enjoy A Christmas Carol. I think it's a great story. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it has one of my favorite quotes in it, when uh, Scrooge goes to Marley and he's like, But you were a good man of business, Jacob. And Marley says, uh, Business, mankind was my business. Charity, mercy, forbearance, and temperance were my business. 
The dealings of my trade were but a drop of water in the comprehensive ocean of my business. Aww. Oh, okay. Well, when I was very young, the thing I most look forward to is the bookmobile coming by every two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And there was a newspaper that we got in grade school called Weekly Reader. And Weekly Reader, yes. they change it different colors it's every still week. still running. All right, and it's, the paper smelled good, too. I always remember that. Mm -hmm. It was thin, too. It was a thin Yeah, thin yeah. Paper. And recently, I looked at a paper that they had in middle school in town. And uh, it's, you know, really nicely done. And there's interesting stuff in there. And I'm so glad that students get to see, uh, read different articles. Anyway, grade school, I remember Silas Marner. Middle school, I don't remember a thing. High school, I'm sad to say, I don't remember reading anything. You read <laughs> George Eliot in elementary school? Uh, yeah, I think so. Cool. Wow. But then I don't, I don't really remember anything because, I don't know, I guess I was having issues. <laughs> when I got, when I got I some to, tissues. I, don't I, got, I have issues, tissues over there. I have issues over there. But I got to college, and um, a professor, Jackson Young, passed out pamphlets of poetry. That's so alliterative. I love it. And like, there was like Dover Beach and some Emily Dickinson mm. and some Shakespearean sonnets, and the sonnets were wonderful. And I. It was like I had just discovered them, but it was. Fifty-seven is my favorite. I remember you just did do we just did Dover Beach a few uh, episodes ago. Oh, okay. Yes, we did. We it's in the second season of the show. Excellent. Well, that that's what got it. So, Professor Emeritus Jackson Young, thank you for that. And uh, I guess at William Patterson, I took a semester, and I really read. I can't remember the professor's name, but it was. Chaucer's Canterbury Tales yes. in oh. Middle English. Yes. And she made it so fascinating that it was like an Vain adventure. Vain and April really with his share of short of the Dwarta Marcha, Thercha to the Rota, and Bada Devery Vain, and Switzerland Court, and Witch Butter Two, and Ginger, etc. So, and so that was probably the beginning of it all. Mm. Yep. What a way. Uh -uh. Yeah. Thank you. What started my passion for literature um, was sheet music, because I'm a drummer, which is technically, it could be literature, and you've written work, it's game, but also, <laughs> on a more serious note, it was uh, Thomas the Tank Engine, yeah, the Thomas the Tank Engine series. I, uh, it was short, you probably know this, uh, short stories teaching good morals and values, and um, it started off um, not in the 80s, it was really long ago, back in the, I think the 40s, it's, it's over 60 years old. Mm -hmm. but, um, and for me, it was just, uh, it was one of the first books I read. Uh, I don't remember the title, but um, I said, I like this. And as I got older, I got into the Hardy Boys. And that, that's mm -hmm. from the 50s and the 60s, or maybe even the 70s as well. But I, I got into that, and I wanted to be a police officer for the longest time. We know how that turned out. This is loaded. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, actually, it has happened. I have done that. But I have learned from my mistake. But I also figured... Being, I always wanted to be a detective as well and go out there and catch those bad guys and put them behind bars where they belong. Or, in some cases, um, treatment facility. But anyway, I digress, as I usually do. Uh, the Hardy Boys was what really got me hooked because um, it was written for uh, preteens, but uh, the, uh, the author used very rich, enriching words, very that my mother and I would read together. Mm -hmm. And um, this is, of course, when I was still small. Um, I was probably like eight or nine, 10. And That's she what's would... called high interest <coughs> fiction. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and it's all fake, you know, but there was a whole series of them. And like Nancy Drew, yeah, there was a another... Nancy Drew was good too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah was Nancy great. Drew was I only read part of the Hardy Boys. I read about half the collection because I, I couldn't find the books anymore. We mm -hmm. got up to volume, I think 25, 26. And we couldn't find them anymore, so uh, I just read them, and I read them over and over again. And the words that he would use were of upper-level vocabulary. And we would underline the words, and I would try and I would go to a dictionary. I would go off, get my fat butt off the, 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 um, my chair, and, and I'd look them up. And I would use some of these words in class um, <laughs> for a different subject, because they could obviously be used. And I, one of the words was ex ex exemplified. Um, and I use that in a paper. I was only in the 
sixth grade, and the teacher comes up to me. She said, "This is very good writing." And you use, do you know what this word means? I said, "Yes." And she said, "What does it mean?" And I told her what it meant. And she said, "That is very, very good. That you, what, where'd you get that from?" I said, "The Hardy Boys." <laughs> yeah. She's like, uh, "Okay." So I'm um, there, and we go, you know, go through the book, and it also, it also taught a lesson as well. So on that note, I want to tell a story. <clears throat> As far as the books teaching vocabulary, at a school in England, has anyone ever read Peter Rabbit? Of course. I've heard of it, mm -hmm. yes. They tried to pair, uh, they published a version where they pared down Beatrix's Potter's vocabulary, and it was, uh, they took the sparrows implored Peter to exert himself, and made it the sparrows told Peter he just had to try harder. Aww. And the kids were like, no, that's not what it is. It's the sparrows implored Peter to exert himself. Exactly. <laughs> so the kids knew what the words meant. Just <laughs> right. The they just they, you, know what it, you, you know what it means, but you can't say it. Yeah, it's a very nice strategy yeah. to yeah. Uh, engage. Exactly. And I remember that uh, when I was younger, um, my dad laid like all the Hardy Boys in my yeah. and my mom had all the Nancy Drews and, yep. and it was just I would read some of them and I'm like this is I was a little older than that so I already knew what a lot of the words was but the stories themselves um, each and every one of them were like different but they were yeah. they were they, the way they solved it the way that that you would be like oh it couldn't have gone any other way you know yeah so yeah, I used to love those books as well That's so good yeah. yeah and I remember a children's book called Z that my mother really really liked it's about a fairy that hates people because everywhere she goes they're always tormenting her she goes to live in the beach a human knocks over her sand castle what she Thanks. goes to live in the garden uh, this man mr. Blastover runs over the garden with the lawnmower I read and, my photo. I never and then she, she has like different animal friends that help her get one up on the people and then eventually at the beach when they kick the pail away a little girl picks it up and becomes Z's friend. It's, very nice. it's mm -hmm. really a sweet story. And so remember this line, uh, Fat Mr. Blasphemer, I hate you, I hate you, I loathe, despise, and detest you. I so it's know, like, that is vocabulary. Yeah, that is My closing thoughts are um, it, The Hardy Boys, Thomas the Tank Engine, and then of course Harry Potter. And then it all went uphill from there. So um, other than that, that's what got me hooked on reading. So. I'm not hooked on phonics, I'm hooked on reading. No, I still say 3 book. was the best Harry Potter. Yeah. I thought it was Goblet of Fire. I, I thought Chamber yeah. of Secrets was my favorite one. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. 2 was Over. a little loose writing style. Hey, was. watch your mouth on camera. Mm -hmm. He said <laughs> loose. <laughs> 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 Somewhat agree. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. So, You're Ari, what was the work that inspired you to indulge in reading? Hmm. Well, I think when I was like in maybe fifth, sixth grade, I don't exactly remember when, I remember that um, my mom had showed me a book. It was called The Phantom Toll Booth by Norton oh, Justice. Oh, yeah. And it, 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 I think when I first read that, I, I just absolutely loved all the, all the mm. concepts because I, I have this brilliant mind where, and I'm not afraid to say it on live internet webcam, I have a brilliant <laughs> mind that has, it lets me like see when something is like a, a, whatever Charlie does, like when he makes his jokes and stuff, puns and everything, and there are a ton of puns and You get to the over. aisle of conclusions by jumping. Yeah, you jump, you have to like, <laughs> jump from the car because you're not thinking properly, and then there's like illusion versus reality. And then there's Dictionopolis, the city of words. Digitopolis, Princess Rhyme and Prince Reason. Yeah, Digitopolis, the city of numbers, and um, <laughs> Rhyme and Reason, like uh, Lily just mentioned. And um, I think, I, like Charlie, I learned a lot of concepts and words in that story that you probably wouldn't have gotten anywhere else, like dodecahedron, for instance, oh, which is a twelve. Thank uh -huh. you. Which is a twelve-faced <laughs> figure with twenty-four oh. sides and. And I don't think anyone in fifth grade would have known what that word was unless they read the Phantom Toll. 
And then, oh, you want to say something? Oh, I remember you uh, reading that in uh, high school as well. You probably reread it. Oh, I've got I've got three copies of the book. One of them is a very old copy my mom first got in the seventies or eighties. Whenever the book it was around the time the book came out, I think I think, Mm -hmm. and um, it was only like. 79 cents because it actually says 79 cents on the cover and then the second one was just a regular copy and then the third one was a hardcover laminated copy that had a um it was uh, it was an anniversary and it had uh, like a forward and an afterward and 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 i think i found year found a, a, a oh there's also a movie for phantom Toll Booth, which is really really good i'd suggest the that. cartoon's cute yeah, uh, it has Butch Patrick in it. It's a very good movie. Um, Don't say there's nothing to do in the doldrums. Yeah. Uh, the doldrums. Drums. No, 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 Charlie, no. One last thing I want to say about this is that years later, I found out that Norton Jester was not an author. He wrote <gasps> this book. And he was not. Well, he wasn't. He was an author after he wrote the book. But before he wrote the book, he was not. He didn't write anything else. That was his first work. He was an architect. He had worked on like building, like building buildings and stuff. And and so, I I I think Phantom Told was really gave my imagination the kickstart it needed to get into books and get into. And it really started with books. Like my entire career of music, probably started with books. Because, like Charlie said, you like read the words, and then you come up with the lyrics, and then you come up with the music to add to the lyrics. So, I mean, that's basically how everything started for me. Definitely, Phantom Toll Booth. And like they say, time is a gift. Give it to you. Give it to give you the time you need. The time you need to have the time you need. Yeah. That's okay. It. okay. La, 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 la. How about a yeah. like World Doll? Yes, I do. With the Charlie and Chocolate Factory, uh, Danny. I love chocolate. Matilda. Matilda. Oh, uh, Matilda's one of my favorites. Yes. I love Roald Dahl. He's an excellent children's mm. author as well. Mm. Um, it just, it's a shame that uh, that they um, never made a Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator movie because they didn't have the rights for it. They, but, they uh, mixed elements of it. In the uh, Willy Wonka, yeah, but they they were but they were thinking of making Roald another Dahl one. Did not approve of yeah, that. that's what it was. Uh, he didn't like that. So, did you ever read Roald Dahl's adult fiction? No, he I wrote don't know. for the New Yorker and stuff. He wrote books that were for adults too. Hmm. Oh wow, they're really good. If, you, if we want to move on, uh, just real quick, if I want to move on to stuff that I liked as an adult. Uh, Sound of Thunder, which we recently reviewed, that's probably a short story I really enjoyed. But if we were to go for a book, uh, one of my favorite books right now is The Picture of Dorian Gray. By oh, oh yes. my gosh, yes. Okay. And I actually have not finished it yet. I'm in the middle of it right now, and I'm enjoying it immensely. So, uh, unless the ending's really bad, which the sound, by the sound yeah. of everyone here, it doesn't sound like it's bad. It does not, dis- it does not disappoint. Story about I, I am looking forward to reading it, and, and for you guys not spoiling it. I'll have to read it again. Okay. again. I mm-hmm. not and spoil, the movie's pretty John good, Ray too. John likes the book, and he's so oh. impressed. John, John's a, a friend of ours who just <laughs> is very, very, very... Particular. No. He's, no. Very, he, he's not an English literature person at all. He's... Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say antisocial, but you know. he's a science I, major. That's what you're saying. When um, when Wilde first came to America, he had to go through customs. And did you ever see have pictures of Wilde? Um, was he wild looking? looking? Picture, yeah. He was dressed very flamboyantly. That's like he would always wear the scarves, the multicolor suits, and everything. Mm-hmm. Right. So in yeah, he yeah. comes through customs. The officer goes, "Do you have anything to declare?" And Wilde says that I'm a genius and bypasses the check, boy. Wonder what that officer was thinking. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for thanks for your time, and on to Josh now. The vibrator on you are ready. Uh, the work that that's what I meant, but I didn't mean that's all I meant. Inspired me to become a literary enthusiast. Actually, I would say that there are plenty of uh, steps, as they are with uh, most people. Uh, was it I was old on business. Yeah, I, that encouraged me uh, to write. <laughs> but my uh, if my family reading to me or telling me stories uh, is one. There's uh, 
I started out enjoying uh, trips to the library where I got books about the uh, U.S. presidents, uh, uh, whether they were individual or uh, collections uh, of, about all of them. But uh, obsessed. I I would say that when it comes to literature, it was a reading class in seventh grade. Uh, her name was a uh, person who taught that was Miss Marmero, now Mrs. Palilla, well, since she got married. Uh, well, congratulations. <laughs> but so the, this, uh, is, this is at Yale Medford, right? This was Medford Lakes. So. The, uh, the works that were in there, uh, we went over uh, O. Henry, we went over Langston Hughes, William ah. Sororin. Mm. Uh, Langston Hughes is some good stuff. There, uh, mm -hmm. Cormier, uh, but the one that sticks out to me the most was when we read The Telltale Heart of Fire Dragon. Of course, of course. <laughs> That was my that was my gateway to everything else that literature had to offer. Uh, the fact that uh, it it was such a horrifying, creepy feeling. This uh, old man it was uh, his so, eye. It was his that, eye. The, that whole the whole idea of the uh, the manic his own personal uh, mental state was what brought him down. Even though. This, uh, he chopped up this old man's body and what? hit it in between the, uh, the planks, which, <laughs> that, sorry, whole, that was whole idea that? was, uh, it, it just drove me into, uh, this guy was, uh, incredible, and I had to read more of his work, so uh, that's where I picked up the, uh, collection of his, and then went on to, why do you eat my boots? <laughs> <laughs> you think? Okay. But anyhow, uh, that that brought me into uh, enjoying uh, works of horror, wanting to get into writing horror. And that's uh, why you like Stephen King. I'm we went sure. over in eighth grade. A lot of our material in uh, novel reading was Stephen King. Wow. Is there wow. a you really read Queen? Stephen King in school? You did? did? Oh my Stephen gosh! A lucky and, uh, interesting. Then I, on my own time, I got into the Green Mile and thoroughly enjoyed uh, that. Yeah. Did you ever read Berenice? Going back to Poe, did you ever read Berenice before I read it at the open mic? Somebody, I read some of it because somebody brought it up because uh, he saw one of my own writings uh, uh, It reminded him of uh, Berenice. Oh, okay. A little uh, segment of it, because uh, my work is about a trip to the dentist. Gone I long. remember this story. Here's a and question. Do you, which do you like better, Poe or King? Ooh, you can't ask people that. I That's... can, I just <laughs> did. It's time. One of my neighbors, her daughter, is married to a Poe. Oh my goodness, I'm so jealous. But, but what do you think? <laughs> what do I think? I think that Edgar Allan Poe's work is a bit more, uh, I would say, granted, uh, I, like, I like reading Stephen King, but I think that there is something remarkable to say about the work of Edgar Allan Poe ah, yes. as well. So I would say that for uh, readers, uh, the work of Stephen King is a bit more it's a bit more accessible. Have you ever heard of uh, uh, The Fall of the House of Usher? Yes, we read that in high school. That and uh, Mask of the Red Cat. Yes. Mm. I think I read it the year after you did, mm -hmm. because I remember you took English. I took, and, yeah, I took the American you. literature class uh, one year and then you did. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I do remember the, both of those stories. I specifically remember Mask of the Red Death, and mm -hmm. they were really Kind of yeah. morbid and creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. creepy Just like Edgar right. Allan Poe, right? Mm, indeed. Was there anybody that had any final remarks? Feel free to leave what drove you to love lit in the comments. I agree. Yes. And I while agree. you're at it, uh, subscribe to our page if you enjoy watching us. Like, comment, subscribe. Discuss literature. And repost to Facebook. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Share. And, and be sure to join us. And uh, as you subscribe, uh, keep on track with uh, yeah. each of the new episodes of Literary Gladiators.
Yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, I wanted to, to thank Josh and Ellie and Charlie for putting oh. uh, me on the panel. I really enjoyed it. Okay. And thank I want to thank you and Ari and Charlie and Lily and uh, don't tell me Delaney. Thank I'm you. Oh, of well. course, Delaney. We can't forget Delaney. Of course. Huh? Most do. It's okay. No, we didn't I know where to get it. You're sure to join us next time for now. The one time I don't want to be the majority. Keep reading. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye.